and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing the brand new release from Kirby Rosans. This is Phantomorphia and this book has been on the colorist radar for quite some time now and uh, it was quite a surprise actually at first because Kirby said that he was going to be stopping doing any colouring books after Mythomorphia which was his third book and then all of a sudden this one popped up on Amazon and we found that he was doing another book so we were really surprised we were really excited and since the book was released yesterday I think it was um Opinions and reviews have been less than favourable for the book, which is a real, real upset, a real disappointment. Um, I'm a massive fan of Kirby's artwork. It's unusual, it's unique. There's nothing else like it out there. He's incredibly talented. But I feel that this book was rushed. Um, I feel that he had his hands tied and I feel that the beautiful, creative interesting images just aren't here in this book and it's a real real shame and I really struggle with doing unfavorable reviews this is one of you know a very very rare number I can't remember the last time I did a bad a bad review or an unfavorable review uh, because if there's books that I don't like I usually just I'll just not review them um, but this one I was expecting it to be the same quality as the previous three books so I didn't expect to be disappointed by it which unfortunately I am and I'll tell you why. So before we get into all that, I'm just going to tell you what I like about the book. I like the cover. I love the blue on the black. The wolf is amazing. It's so detailed. It's exactly what we've come to expect from Kirby. It promises a lot for the book. I also like the plasticky feel of the cover. So it is card, but it's been coated in a plastic um, very smooth surface coating and that's really nice it seems really durable and you know it doesn't seem like it'll dog ear or anything like that so I like that back of the cover as you can see as normal is the back of the wolf going around from the front and yeah that's pretty much it for what I like about the book there are a few illustrations inside that I love um, but yeah it's 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 not great overall now I'll get on to the reasons why so the first time I opened the package and got this book, I couldn't believe how thin it was. I was not expecting it to be that thin. Now his other books, for instance, here we've got Mythomorphia. His other books are made up of 40 illustrations and you can really say 80 because they're all double-sided. So you're getting 80 sheets of illustration. Phantomorphia, however, has just 19 illustrations in it and they're all single-sided so it's literally 19 illustrations that's it and <clears throat> to say that you are paying the same if not slightly more for Phantomorphia now on Amazon than you would be for his previous books with 40 illustrations it is a massive bone of contention with colorists and of course it is you know we don't want to be paying the same amount of money for less content and unfortunately, the illustrations inside are not up to the usual standard that we've come to expect from Kirby. And there are reasons for that, which I'll come to explain. Let's just start going through the book and you can tell me what you think in the comments. OK, so we open up the cover. We have the illustration from the front, as we normally do. You can colour that in. Then we have the book belongs to and the illustrated by pages. Nothing wrong with these, really. I like the frames. They're very intricate. They're very decorated. But if we look for, at Mythomorphia, for, incident, for instance, we have the same pages, but they're incredibly detailed. We have loads and loads. It's jam-packed with, with uh, detailed colour. So the whole of these two pages can be coloured. And as you can see, these have just been really stripped back, sort of bare bones. And another thing about them is they're incredibly dark um, so much shading has been used throughout this book it really makes the illustrations look like beautiful line work that you would just admire as black and white work rather than images made for coloring so yeah that is a real problem throughout the book so now we've got the copyright information, we've got a little note from Kirby explaining about the objects scattered throughout the book, the search and find element that we usually have with his books. And yeah, nothing wrong with these pages whatsoever. Now we move on to the first illustration. And the thing that really struck me about this straight away was that the bird is just black. There's no way you can colour that bird. I mean, the only thing, the only place you could put colour is on these very, very narrow crescents 
on the wings and you know you're not you just can't color that bird so what you can only do on this page is color all the leaves and fronds around it you could do a background but it's just so busy that it'd be really laborious to get in and do that background so really it's a page full of leaves to color which you know it's not great now this illustration I quite like. I like skulls. Uh, Kirby's done a few different skulls in his books before. I like the, the flock of butterflies all over it. I probably will colour this one. I really like it. Again though, a bit too much shading, a bit too dark. This image, as beautiful as it is, and as I mentioned, you know, to look at, it's, it's a brilliant drawing. Uh, it's just not suited to colouring. It's not made for colouring books. It's too dark, again, for a start. It's too intricate in the way that you know there's nowhere really that you can do any blending in here you can't get your techniques into practice it's so dark around here and we've got this crescent with this filigree sort of pattern and this appears an awful lot in the book and you know it's it's a nice image don't get me wrong you can do a nice background on it you can do something nice with the clouds but it's just not made for coloring in my opinion again here we've got loads and loads of tree roots with loads of black very dark shading around it and then some swords just embedded into the roots while it sounds like a nice concept for a, for a, for a colouring page it's just there's not a lot you can do with it I mean it might be okay if you do these uh, swords really bright and then the roots all brown and dark so the swords really stand out but it's just not one of my favourites now this one I absolutely love. This is the steampunk cat. I love anything steampunk. So we've got this glass eye, robotic eye. We've got pipes and cogs and clocks and metalwork and all kinds of different things on here. Love it. The only thing is it's been cut off at the top here. Um, and I would have really liked that to be a whole entire image with nothing cut off, nothing going off the edge. And that would have worked really well. So yeah, just a little qualm about that one. Again, we've got metalwork, cogs, things like this. Uh, very reminiscent of his work in Imagimorphia. So this one could have gone in Imagimorphia. But again, if you see around the dragon's head and around some of the background, it's just too shaded. There's too many little black lines and not enough room for colours. You know, it's, it's just going to be so, so dark no matter what you do to it. This one here is it's basically just what I could describe as boring and I think that's a horrible word I hate the word boring but it is it lacks that creativity it lacks that imagination that interest that we we've come to expect we've come to see from Kirby's previous work there's just there's just nothing special about that whatsoever again here we've got all of that filigree all of that pattern and I'm not a fan of pattern in colouring books anyway we've got loads of these sort of random filigree swirly shapes around the edge and I mean if you hadn't told me that this was a Kirby Roseanne's illustration I wouldn't know you know it's got none of his style it's got none of his signature on there this one however love it imagine more fear again this would have been a really really good fit we've got this clock face we've got loads of flowers and leaves sprouting from everywhere absolutely love it again bit too dark in here but you know I do like it it's one of the better ones but again it's cut off at the top so here's the one that I've colored obviously I did this with Prismacolor pencils and yeah nothing wrong with the illustration I really like the um, the metallic spider uh, you know I like the bits and bobs and things that he's collected in his web um, I couldn't really do much with the background on this because there's just too many little elements that would annoy me having to get around them and stuff, but that's a personal thing. Um, just while we're talking about the one that I've coloured, I'll just move on to the paper. It's actually really good paper. It's thicker than the Mythomorphia that I have. Now, this is the US edition, this one I've got here of Phantomorphia, and the Mythomorphia that I have is the UK edition, so I don't know whether that makes any difference because I don't have any of the other editions, uh, of the, in the US but I have found that this paper is thicker than the Mythomorphia UK edition it's bright white it's got a nice smooth tooth to it nothing wrong with the paper whatsoever I really really like it now this illustration looks like it could have come straight out of Mythomorphia we've got these tree trunks and mushrooms with old gnarly faces leaves sprouting out with some of his beautiful little doodle illustrations inside there really really nice image really like that one it should have gone in Mythomorphia 
But again, here we are with all of that filigree. Um, just nothing, nothing special about it whatsoever. I do like the skulls embedded into the flowers in the background. I probably would have preferred that background on its own without the butterfly, to be honest. This one I do like because it's very, very decorative. This hourglass, we've got skulls and dragons in the frame of the hourglass. We've got little bits of sort of Knights of the Round Table pieces around here. We've got a skull again with candles. If you don't like skulls, you're not gonna like this book. There's a lot of them. Um, and all the roses and thorns and things. Nothing wrong with that image really whatsoever. A couple of these things, you know, probably a bit too shaded. But compared to the other, other things in the book, it's not too bad at all. This one here was a massive disappointment because I have actually seen this coloured and I thought, oh my gosh, it's got a huge pumpkin in it. I love horror. I love gothic stuff. I thought it was going to be incredible. But looking at the line art, it's very basic, very childlike even. These lines on the pumpkin, these, again, filigree type patterns, just not needed. Just not needed at all. Um, it's just not not great I don't think and again here more filigree and as I said earlier I wouldn't have had a clue that that was a Kirby Roseanne's illustration if you'd shown me and I didn't know so you know it's just lacking it's just lacking his style it's 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 lacking everything but here we've got one that's definitely Kirby's uh, style we've got his owl we've got all the playing cards nothing wrong with that image really nice I would have liked a double page spread maybe with a bigger owl and more cards and things flowing out but as you can see through this book there are no double page spreads which they could have done they could have done double page spreads and still kept it single sided like Johanna's Christmas for instance um you know they could have done that here we've got a crown made out of roses with this kind of fleur de -lis pattern thing here I think that's what it's called yeah it's okay it's okay it's nothing special we've got some bugs with little gems encrusted into the back of them and things they'll probably look really nice and decorative when they're done really nice and shiny and then most disappointingly of all we have the beautiful beautiful wolf from the front cover and as we saw on the back it does have a body it does have a behind but it's cut off we only have half a wolf and there's no completion of the image and it's just just not it's just not been well thought out at all so finally we've got all of the items and things that you have to look for throughout the book and we have all of the answers of where they are and then we just have a bit of promo for his first three incredible books and that is the end of the book so 19 illustrations and you know if it had been 19 super brilliant proper kirby uh incredibly creative images it might not have been so bad but the images just didn't live up to to my expectations and a lot of other colorists expectations unfortunately but there is a few caveats that I need to say about this so Kirby put out a status on his Facebook page just recently saying that a lot of the elements that colorists are not liking about this book were not his choice not his decisions I think his arms were pretty tied with this his hand his hands sorry were pretty tied with this um he said that it was the publisher's decision to have less detail and more basic images also to leave out the characters his doodle characters that he's famous for it was also their decision to have it single-sided um it was the editor's decision to um to put the, th the, the themes that are in the book in there so every single page kirby had a brief for um, so they would have basically told him what to draw and he would have just put his own spin on it. So I do feel that he was very, very restricted in this. And, you know, he wasn't going to do another book after Mythomorphia and then all of a sudden this one popped up. So it just feels like a very kind of rushed, rushed job. Now, he has said that there will be one final book coming out in October this year and it will be the same size and same content, same width as Phantomorphia. So those two books together will make one complete book, but obviously it's not great to have to pay the same amount for this half book than you would for an, for an entire book. So yeah, price wise, this is $10.80 on Amazon US and Mythomorphia is currently $9.78. So it is more expensive than the previous books. I get that it's a new release, that's why, but the content's not there. So I don't think it justifies the price. 
it hasn't come out in the UK yet, but I will be putting the pre-order link in the description if you want to go and pre-order it. Totally up to you. Please let me know in the comments what you think um, about it, if you've got your copy, how you found it, and um, yeah, let me know. Please click the thumbs up if you've liked this video. Even if you didn't like the book, please click the thumbs up. It helps my channel. Um, and also don't forget to subscribe. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.